So I'm going to title this little short video, part 1.5 of my deep dive in fonts. I meant to mention it in the first video and it was on my notes to do so and I forgot. My bad. Sorry. So, Ink Stitch says push pull compensation, push pull effect is on the sides of your satin stitch that has the needle marks, it's going to pull. And on the other side, it's going to push. So to compensate, you will, if your desired size is this, you're going to make it a little bit bigger on the sides and a little bit shorter on the ends. The push effect doesn't happen so much at the original point where you start the satin stitch, but where it ends, it will push for sure. It also depends on these things to consider what fabric you're doing it on. If you're doing it on a pair of denim jeans, it will not push pull as much as if you're doing it on a cotton shirt, what your stabilizer is, the design size, stitch type length, underlay stitches, and we'll get to that one shortly. You can put down some underlay stitches that will help to minimize the push pull effect. You're hooping, is it tight? Or are you leaving it loose? And your machine speed and I'm bad for that because I like my machine to run as fast as it can. So let's look at some examples here. Uh, I'm going to do a stick figure box. Just like this and like this. And grab the two, put them together, do a combine. Extensions, ink stitch, params, and a satin column. Satin column. Apply. So there's our first one. I'm actually going to take that and I'm going to just duplicate that. If I wanted these two satin stitches to be side by side and I wanted them to overlap so there's no gap, I would actually overlap them a little bit because the pull is going to pull these two away from each other and then the push is going to push it off on the end so i could shorten this down a little bit which i guess it kind of is okay so if that would work for the pull compensation i have it overlapping as you can see here overlap it a little bit Yes, you'll get some stitching inside of the other one, which is better than having gaps. That we can agree on for sure. And I'm going to select both of them. Extensions, ink stitch, params. So what you can do, this is what we look like so far. Oh, that nasty jump. I'm going to close that out. Hit cancel. I want to see what it will do with a uh, auto route stitch. I want to see what it'll do. I turn off trim jump stitches usually because I want to see not every machine will cut stitch. So... Just keeping that turned off will make it safer for more variety of machines. If your machine will cut stitch from ink stitch, then turn that trim setting back on. So now let's see what we look like in a param. It's going to run that down. Jump over the other side and run it back up. I like that. So what you can do on underlay, there's a bunch of different settings for underlay. You got three different settings here. So center walk just puts that line down the center. And in this case, up the center. So contour, let me turn it back off. Contour basically draws an outline and then stitches to that. That's not going to fix your pull. It'll, it'll fix your, it will help to fight off the push, but it will not fix the pull. So we're going to turn that off. The center line walk really won't either. However, how about zigzag? Let's see what we do here. We like that. 
it's not so much going to fix your pull, but it should fix most of your push. And you can also combine them. So center walk and contour and zigzag are all set. It does a whole lot of pre-stitching before it does the satin stitch. Not too many of this is not too much of this is going to fix your pull. So you still have to compensate with overlapping. This will def this will definitely help the push. So go ahead and apply and quit. I'm going to remove that. How does this work for fonts? Let's make a letter and we'll make that letter A. Go into my letter tool. I'm going to leave it on sans serif, but I'm going to make it. I guess I can just make it bigger. We'll make it bigger. We'll do that. So we're going to outline this. Make sure that snapping is off and it is. Click and a click. Going to click here, click there, and then I'm going to click. I'm going to hit the control button so that my line is straight up. Hit enter. Select tool, shift select for both of them. Path, combine. Extension zinc stitch. Rams. And set a. Oh yeah, I did do a different number, didn't I? I need to turn, go into objects, uh, objects. I need to turn that letter down so I can see it, what I'm doing here. Okay, that's better. Okay, yeah, I did different number of nodes, so I need to have some cross, cross beams. Otherwise known as rungs. Okay. Now we'll select all of that. And combine. Now we can get us a a proper a proper satin stitch. Satin column, satin column. Apply and quit. Beautiful. Now to make this really easy, the way I did that first one, all I have to do is duplicate, flip it and drag it over one drag it over here we go so for the pull compensation we're going to leave this overlapped there it's not overlapped there it is overlapped and yep yeah, i like that it's already set, as far as I know, it's already set to be a satin stitch. Should be. So all we have to do is worry about this bottom one. Let's make our line. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to overlap that as well. Because both of those rails going up and down on both sides, it is going to pull away from center. So we'll do that. Make sure you overlap. We'll do that. This will push some, but we're going to use underlay to keep it from pushing much. And then you should always do a test piece before you do your final piece to see what you've got. Uh, path, combine, extensions, ink stitch, params. Custom satin column. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to select, I'm going to get rid of that bottom layer text. So that leaves just my satin stitch. I'm going to grab all three of those layers, objects, not layer, layer in objects. Very confusing. I'm going to grab all those, do an ink stitch, satin tool, auto route satin column. Hit apply. Lovely. Love it. Okay. Now with that one, I'm going to select all of this. Go to extensions and params. And just 
turn on whatever underlay you like. You can turn on all three of them. You can just turn on one. I like the center because the center is going to push more than the ends. Zigzag is awesome because it really sets down a nice little foundation for the satin to go on. And that's a nice looking A. You can see a little bit of overlap. And that overlap should clear up depending on, again, depending on your fabric and your stabilizer that you're using. But that's it for this video. I'm a little bit shy on videos this week because my mom's having an operation. She's doing well. I'm supposed to be able to get her out on Saturday. Appreciate everybody's patience and understanding. But I'll be back into the full swing of things soon. Thanks for watching.